Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now then, this is going to be a new series. Um, don't, for, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about Cozy Chats and I haven't forgotten about the Tweakery videos. There will be more of those in the future. I'm, I'm sort of planning to do that. But I had this idea a while back um, of being more specific about systems, of sort of requirements in certain situations. So, for instance, you know, you have a certain budget, you have a certain type of room, what would you put in there? Because things... Equipment choices can be radically different just just for the scenario that you're in, really. I mean, particularly budget. I mean, obviously that's that makes a massive difference. But the room you're in makes a big difference as well. So, uh, I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to sort of almost talk about where you should be sort of spending the money because there's an awful lot of preconceptions about things, um, and that's partly what spurred me on a little bit with this. Because um, I mean, the first one I want to do is big budget with a small room. Really, not a massive, not sort of crazy, crazy budget, but big budget with small room, because I think that's quite an interesting one. Because the conversations I've had with people about this have been, well, you know, I don't need a big amplifier because, well, it's just a small room, and I don't listen loud, and you get all these sort of assumptions about things, and well, there's not a lot of point in spending much money on this because it's 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 only small, and you know, it's not going to sound any good, is it? The interesting thing about small rooms is. Most of the best systems I've ever heard have been in really small rooms. I mean, fully of the best sound I've ever had sort of was when I lived with my parents and I had uh, a, a room of the house for hi-fi and it was the smallest room in the house and it was wonderful. It was a really good, really good sounding room and I, I ended up with quite a major setup in there and it was great. So you've got to... It's more to do with acoustics. It's more to do with um, if there's any cancellations in the room and all this sort of thing, but that's the important stuff. But generally, smaller rooms can work really well but you just have to be careful what you put in there uh, you can't go you know big floor standards and all this sort of thing so I would have got, let's go through it piece at a time the thing to do is to spend the biggest amount of your budget on the source partly because you're not trying to fill a space you're not trying to you know you, what you really don't want is a, a massive pair of floor standards and a massive amp really you don't you're not trying to fill a big a big space necessarily um, so, best best possible source. Now, the obvious one for this, I'm, I'm, I'm setting myself a budget here of about 20,000 quid. Loads of money, really. Way more than most people would, would even consider for a small, small room. I'm thinking of it being a room perhaps 10 foot by 12 or less than that, really. So, you know, that's basically the this, this small, small bedroom in a house or... Um, you know, that you back, back study or that sort of thing, which quite often is where hi-fi systems end up being a, a sort of assigned to because, you know, there's a family, there's everything else, there's other considerations, and, it, well, if you want to have a hi-fi system, you can use that room. That, I hear that story an awful lot, really, not being, you know... But, yeah, you hear that an awful lot with people. Well, I've only got the small room in the house because that's where I'm the only person I'm allowed to have it, and that's quite common, actually, sort of, um, you know. So starting, we've got that sort of budget. Obviously, you're going to go for the Riga Naya turntable. It's obvious, really, isn't it? Um, I mean, it's, I talked about this the other day. I will be doing a full review on this, actually, because there's some very interesting sort of details on this that I really need looking at and talking about. Uh, but the thing with the Naya is it's one of the best sources out there, really. Why wouldn't you? Um, it really digs out the information, it's really clean and clear and open and natural. Um, it gives you detail without sterility, which is the downfall of a lot of high-end decks. It just doesn't do it. It's so open and musical. I've, I've not listened to, listened to it a lot yet, but it's, it's almost a bit shocking, actually, how good it is, really, even compared to a P10. So, but yeah, I'll do, I'll do a full review of it at some point. But um, cartridges we'll talk about later. I think that's whatever, but... Um, yeah, certainly is a, all your budget on source, and this is the way to do it, is to go, go nigher, because that just get, makes the best of your rec the, the recordings you've got, uh, and then presents it to the amplifier. So, yeah, that, that's the choice. Right, so amplifier. Um, you've got a brilliant signal source. Let's go amplifier. Um, obviously, there's phono stage as well, but we'll, I'll talk about things like phono stages at the end. Um, it, amplifier, now, in a small room, it's wrong to think, actually, that you don't need loads of power. It's not to do, it's, um, it's more to do with the capability of the amplifier, really. It's more to do with how well it will drive speakers. And in some ways, you need better drive in a smaller room than you do in a big room because turning up the volume has more of an effect in a small space. So you want something that, at low level, 
has still has dynamics and still has bass weight and still is keeping a, a grip of the speakers. So in some ways you almost need to overcompensate by getting an amplifier that's way beyond what you need, but just so it's got that ability. And I'm not, again, you'll, you get bored of hearing this if you watch these videos. It's not to do with what's per channel necessarily. It's more to do with um, driving ability, uh, which comes more from current, more from having a big transformer and being well designed really. So um, you've got your things like the Atolls and the and Sugden and Riga are, are particularly good at it. Nem Audio are quite good at, at low level listening because they've, you know, they're not high rated power, but they've got quite a lot of current drive, that sort of thing. Um, the obvious one to me, because if you want something which is lit for close listening, whatever, um, is the, I'm going to stretch up a little bit to, for this one. Um, on the top here in, in graphite, we have a Sugden A21. The obvious choice, to be honest, really. I mean, I did wonder about, there's some valve, amp options and that sort of thing, which are great in, in small spaces, um, because a lot of them are quite low power and whatever, and it, 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 you know, in a, in a small room with an efficient pair of speakers, you can get some really good sounds. The Sugden, I think, is probably a better choice, because it sounds very valve-like, it's a lot more reliable, it's just beautiful to listen to, drives really well at low levels, which is quite important, in a, as I've said, in a small room. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this is just the, the straight line level, there's no phono stage in it. We'll talk about phono stages later. Um, obviously, if you go in high-end system, then ex external phono stage is the way to go, but we'll talk about that at the end. But yeah, the um, it, because it's class A, very low level listening is, is superb on these. Um, and there's this just ability to sort of pull the music out and get you very involved in it. Um, more so than the one below it, actually, the SE, which is more capable drive-wise uh, so if you've got more difficult speakers, bigger room, you'll go for the SE because that's a bit more powerful and a bit more drive. Um, but side by side, quite often, people prefer the straight, the straight uh, 21 because it just has a, an extra level of musicality, really. Um, yeah, it's interesting, that, really. I think, I think the musicality comes back in again when you go up to things like the IA4. Uh, quite well, yeah. It's an interesting one. But anyway, that's, uh, that's the choice, the A21. I mean, we could, we could go much higher in value than that, but in some ways, the, tw the 21 is so good, you don't need to. It's such a good amp, particularly in this, particularly in this scenario. Yeah, so speakers. Um, now then, requirements in a small room. You want something which is quite good close to, something what you would call a near-field monitor, I suppose. Not something that you feel as though you want to get further and further away from. Um, now, there's, there's models out there that are particularly good at this. Uh, I have one in mind. I mean, obviously, what you want is really good definition and something that will, you know, just draw you musically as well. So, I mean, we've, we've got the Sugden Amplifier and that was very, very musically accurate and very, very involving. And so you want something that, that, that matches that. And my choice, and this is new to, new to the to Cheshire Audio, I've had variants of this before. I had another model from, from the same company, uh, very different look about it, but it's basically roughly the same speaker, actually, when it comes down to it. So my choice here is going to be the... And for speakers, we've got Fine Audio Vintage 5s, which I absolutely love. I think the, visually they're an absolute treat because the, the finish on them is incredible. Uh, they just do this one worn-up worn up finish, but it just really suits them. I mean, it's just that sort of... They're, sort of, they're called vintage, but they're, they're, it's basically just a vintage look. The, the drivers are very high-tech. I mean, they kind of look like um, a Kef... Uniq and they kind of look like dual concentrics. They're much more than that, and I, I'm going to do a full review of these and explain why they're much more than that. Um, but part of the reason that this, they're so perfect for small room is, is a lot to do with that driver. Um, I mean, obviously, there's bigger versions of these. This is the five. There's, there's a five mini five-inch driver. There's an eight, a ten, and a fifteen. Believe it or not, the fifteen is a huge, like a wardrobe with the driver in. Um, but they're amazing. They're really, really good. Um, but they're not difficult to drive, um, they fill a space, they're really good for near-field monitoring type things, so you're sitting close to a speaker. And that's a lot to do with the way that driver works, because, um, because everything's aligned in every direction. Uh, the treble's in the middle, the bass is around the outside, you get a pinpoint image from them. And, and also, time alignment-wise, front to back, means that you get really good um, sort of timing. So I mean, you wouldn't have thought that the, the, the distance between you know, where the treble and the bass starts um, makes that much difference, but it really does. It does, speakers can sound so much more precise if everything's, that attention to detail with that uh, is, is looked at. Um, 
So yeah, I mean these are uh, these will be the choice for a small room. I think. I mean, there's other there's other possibilities, but I think at this sort of money, because most speakers when you get to this sort of level, um, they need space, they need driving, they need all sorts of things. I mean, there's, there's plenty. There's plenty of these are for just short of four thousand um, pounds, and then you need to stand. I mean, I've got them on the quadraspires, which almost the finish doesn't really match. To be fair, but the um, yeah the. the it sort of sonically matched them, but whether they visually matched them really a little bit. It's like a bit of, of a clash of uh, uh, of old and new, really. But um, there's also um, the F5, which is a model above this, which is a much more curvaceous, more modern-looking design. Some people don't quite gel with it. I had a demonstration pair for a while, and everybody loved the sound of them, but people were a bit, little bit mixed on whether they thought they looked nice. These are a little bit more... A bit more sort of user friendly, I think, and sort of visually, I think they're more likely to have people being really into these. I think they're gorgeous. I really, I really do. I mean, if you're going to be stuck in a small room with a hi-fi system and need to look at a pair of speakers, at least have something good looking. Um, they also have a bit of a, a bit of an interesting one, a bit controversial. There's a, a presence lift control. Now, it's, it's not active. This is a this is a passive control, so it's basically tweaking the crossover a little bit. That's probably harking back because these are related to um, fan audio sort of sprang from Tannoy, the real ex Tannoy employees. So it's probably harking back to the, the early days of uh, um, like studio monitors and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's one of those things that they, they did sort of incorporate. But anyway, I'm not sure what I think about that, but it, it doesn't seem to impede the sound of these things because they do sound amazing, really. Um, I must admit, I haven't really played with the, the presence on that. I haven't really sort of tried to see what it does, but. Um, anyway, yes, <laughs> yeah. Part of the reason they're good in a small room, they do have this sort of what's it called, ISO flare system. We've got the port here, and the 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 sound from the driver is ported down, and it comes out around uh, the ex this little slot all the way around. And it's got there's like an upturned comb which you can just about make up make out there. I think that sort of it makes it exit in a sort of uniform way. So the porting on this is completely controlled, and it's not as dependent on wall proximity is a lot of speakers so you're fine in a small room and obviously if you get them too close in they might start to bloom a little bit but that's physics you can't really get around it but they're not they don't seem to be as susceptible as a lot of speakers for that the fines generally seem to be quite good in that respect so yeah that's the speakers right so you've got your system now so we've got the Regan Eye turntable so that's getting all the information off the record and it's presenting it in a sort of really musical really involving sort of way um, you'll find when you get to this level of record player that even old sort of shaky recordings from that you thought weren't that great suddenly come alive because the music the music is pulled out of it and you start to understand the, the musicians better and that sort of thing. Even even, even things that are a bit scratched, you'll find that it's it's not as a, much of a distraction anymore because the music's involving you. So that's your main part of the system sorted. The Sugden is beautifully open, very natural, very involving again to listen to. Um, very good at low level, very good at low level. Class A is particularly good in that respect. It, it, it just, you can just have them idling and they just sound great. And then we've got the fine audio speakers, which are very good for near, near field listening, very, you know, close proximity li listening. Uh, the time alignment thing with the driver helps with the musicality and the timing again. So we'll, we've got here a system which is really involving to listen to that will work in a small space without upsetting boundaries or anything like that because it, it doesn't go crazy deep in the bass which is fairly irrelevant in a small room anyway. Uh, it won't sound bass light at all, it'll take you by surprise because the fines are very capable at the low end, but it's all, it'll all be within the capabilities of the environment. Um, what we've not talked about is all the other bits you'll need around that. Uh, we didn't talk about cartridge. I think with the cartridge, there's various to be honest. It's almost to taste that. It's one of those, It's keep it within budget. I personally would probably go a feeder or Athlon with a with uh, with a Naya. Um, there's other options. Interesting. I think the the Hannah would be quite good on that. I haven't tried it, but I think the Hannah is it Mimami, whatever blue or red. One of those would be would suit the would suit the Naya really well. Um, shame Kiseki aren't available at the moment. Shame Lyra are pretty much not available at the moment as well. Because either of those would be good. Um, you're gonna need a need a phone on stage. That's a little bit kind of dependent on what cartridge you end up with, really, but. Highlights there will be Tom Evans' Groove, if you want to spend the money. The, the Groove is probably one of the best phono stages out there at the moment, really. Really good. I mean, the only ones that are better are the Tom Evans stuff, which are even higher. It's about 3,000, just short of 3,000 for a, a, a Tom Evans' Groove. Uh, you could go Micro Groove Plus, 
if you want to cut the budget a little bit. Um, surprisingly, and it's a funny thing to say, but surprisingly, the Riga Aria is worth looking at because considering they're a manufacturer who make other things, um, they're very good at photo stages, which is rare. There's very few, I've said this so many times, it's very rare for a manufacturer who does everything to be any good at phono stages. But Riga are, they do some, they, they, they do some little basic phono stage they do, the, the Aria and the, the top one, which the name of it escapes me for the moment, which is wonderful. Um, what's it called? Can't remember. Um, so yeah, that depends on where you go with cartridges really. Cabling, I would probably go Nordost actually, I think with, with that setup, because um, Nordost doesn't influence the sound in any negative ways, it just gives you what's there but improves it, so you get more clarity, more openness, more everything. And I know there's a lot of negativity with speaker cables online, and it's a lot to do with people assuming that the basic stuff, like when you know, cross section, that's all that's important. There's a lot more to it than that. I mean, there's, there's people out there who say, "Oh, I'm an electrician, I know how this works." And really, there's a lot more than volts over amps equals whatever, whatever, whatever calculation it is they work it out with. It just there seems to be more to it. Always listen to cables, never take people's words for it. Don't listen to the negativity, don't listen to people who, who, you know, who spout on about cables in ridiculous ways. There's a mid-ground and cables are worth listening to. So listen, always borrow, borrow stuff, try it, see what you think. Um, that's about it really, that's kind of everything you need. Um, isolation, obviously there's all that sort of thing really. In a small room sometimes isolation is more important than it is in a big room. Be worth having something under the turntable, uh, decent pair of stands for the speakers, or if you're going to put them on cabinets, those little um, those little substands that I showed the other day, the little Perto substands, um, they, they'd be good under the fines. So there you go. That's that's the system. Um, like I said, I want to do a few of these. I think this is quite interesting. It, I quite enjoy thinking it through and thinking, well, that'd really work with that, and that'd really work. That's fine in a small room, big room, X, Y, Z. Uh, and just trying to build it all together in my mind. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit like the "what if I won the lottery" sort of scenarios. I think that's that's always quite an interesting one. There's a customer of mine that every time I go and see him, he he says, "You know, if I won the lottery," and he goes through all his equipment. And um, I think up to, to date, well, actually, last time I saw him, he'd won the lottery, but he it's two pounds twenty, I think he won. So we were talking about how we were going to share a coffee at Costa, or try to, well, and I'd have to put some to it. So yeah, anyway, I um, hope you like this one. Um, how I'm going to put piece this together, I don't know, because I'm sort of, yeah, the, the way this has been filmed is a bit strange. You, you probably won't be aware of this, but I've filmed this in a really strange way. So we'll see how that works. Um, I will be at the, the um, complete whew, of subjects here. Uh, it's the Cranage show this weekend. I will be there, Not I'm not going to um, have a room there again. I'm just because I like I like walking around to be honest, and because I'm on my own, if I had a room, I'd have to be in the room all the time. I won't get to walk around it. So, no, I'll, I'll be wandering around. Probably the theory is I'm going to be there Saturday morning. So if you see me, say hello. Um, don't be shy. Say hello, um, and that's it really. Yeah, I'll say Saturday morning. Probably won't be there very long. To be fair, just a few key people I'm going to go and see. Um, that'll be it really. So, but it's a good show. If you think if you've been thinking about so whether to go or not, do, no, do go. It's a good. It's one of the better shows. It's only small, but it's it, there's some good good things there, and it's a nice it's a nice layout. You will get lost, uh, but it's quite, it's quite a nice layout. But you will get lost. I always do. Um, I think that's it. Is there anything else to talk about? No, I think that's it really. Don't forget to give a subscribe and a like, and I will see you in a future video. And I, am pro I promise to do that. It's still down there running in. IN300. People keep asking me about that now. Um, what, what do you think of it? Um, so far, really good actually. But well, yeah, that, that, let's, let's promise that that's going to be the next video. Okay, I'll see you soon.